All right, everyone, welcome back. So today, as I'm walking around inside the castle, you can tell we are going to be doing something very exciting, and that is we are finally working on the interior of this thing. So this project was started over four and a half years ago at this point, maybe even five, and uh, it's been a very, very long time before I have even thought about deciding to work on the inside here and so we are finally at the point with this thing if we head outside you can see that the exterior has for the most part been completed and by that the word completion i would take that term loosely it has had the rough shape completed so i know where all of the towers are at this point i know what the design is going to be like but as you can see uh, we haven't gone through and filled in all of the windows and a lot of the texturing still needs to be done with the white pieces here. So that's something that I will do over time um, because uh, it, it's very difficult to actually get up there and do that type of stuff when using scaffolding. So I figured I was actually going to do it the reverse way of build the inside first. And as we build the inside and tower up and reach those walls, I'll just replace and fill in all the stuff as we go up. So I think that's going to be the most efficient way to get this done. It has taken such a long time to get to this point, but I absolutely love how this has turned out. And I can't wait to show you guys what I'm going to do with the inside here. So uh, I've already gotten to work. You've seen uh, here that I've cleared out a lot of this stuff. So what I've been doing is there's kind of a lot of like these cobblestone walls that have been set up. And that was just for building the castle. I didn't intend for those to stay there. So a lot of things like this and this will get removed. So we only want the cobblestone to the point where it is visible and you're going to see why that is because of how I'm going to do the interior here. It's going to be a little different than what you would normally um, do. And so I'll explain that right now as I'm tearing this part down, which is we are going to build the interior in its own shape, not relative to the shape of this stuff in here. So the interior is going to be completely uh, I don't want to use the word separate, but it's kind of going to be inspired on its own little thing, whereas the exterior is going to have its own shape as well. So um, I do know what I want to do for the interior. I have a plan for that, and so I need to knock a lot of this dirt out in order to get that done. Let's go ahead and let's start planning this out, and I'll build a small section with you guys so you can see what I'm trying to do, and we can go from there. This is how I'm going to design it here. So I'll make a little section with you guys so you can understand how I'm going to do this here. So I'm going to use uh, dark oak stripped logs on the bottom like this, right? So we're going to strip all these. So we have something like that. And then uh, what I'm going to do is uh, we're just going to hope that it lines up. I'm not exactly sure uh, the spacing. I um, use the wrong block there. I want the chiseled tough bricks and so we're going to place those along like that um, but then we want to count three so one two and three and we're going to get rid of these guys right here because this is where we're going to put a backdrop in the wall i think this is going to be really cool so um let's just place a temporary block there and we can get mangrove planks very nice red color right and uh how i'm going to do this is i'm going to go back to the tough bricks and then we're going to start stacking those up like so so you can kind of see where this is going a little bit i just want to extend this one more here don't need these those are for the roof section so get those chiseled tough bricks and we can kind of just stack these up like this right here so um i'm not exactly sure how high up i want to go i haven't really thought about that all that much um and so it's going to be a little awkward especially with the entrance but i think I don't know. What was that? Five blocks? That was four. I feel like we should go one more. One more on the height. So we don't need this whole giant wall here, right? This is all going to get torn out anyways. Um, so I think we'll go one higher for the wall here. So we can just knock that out for now. Uh, so one higher. And that's going to be where we start to round off the roof like this. So... Uh, by doing that, I'm going to grab my tough brick stairs and I'm going to place some upside down ones right here and right there. And then I'm going to take a slab or uh, excuse me, not a slab. I'm going to take a full block and place that right there. 
And you'll see what that does is now, as we jump down, we've got this nice little thing in the wall. So it's unfortunate that that block, I don't think, can be changed, right? Oh, no, it looks like it can, actually. Uh, oh, <laughs> it's going to it's gonna get caught a little bit. That's a, there's a little bit of a... Uh, it's almost unnoticeable, though, so it's that one right there. So what I am going to do is I'm going to place it there anyways. Then I'm going to take one of these. Oh, but that's going to ruin the symmetry. It's not even noticeable. Nobody will know. All right. So now we end up with something like that. And then we have to design the floor for this as well. So I do know what I want to do for that. But first, let's sleep because I don't want creepers blowing up my build. So I've grabbed some dark oak slabs here. The reason I have grabbed slabs is because we can actually save a lot of materials by using the slabs, right? We're not going to waste as much. So uh, what I wanted to do was line the uh, bottom trim. So right next to this with the dark oak here. So uh, something a little like that. And I think that's where we can turn everything in and start uh, bringing it towards that middle section right there. Uh, you could see, you could probably tell why I've been putting this off for so long, how difficult it is to decide how to do this. So yeah, there's lots of different angles and elevation to work with. And so it's going to take me a while to kind of figure this out. Um, so it's going to be probably a painfully slow process. But I know that you guys have been wanting to see this for a while. So that's why I'm making this video. Now I'm a little more organized. So now we can start actually doing stuff the right way. So um, you can kind of see uh, what I had going on here. So we have this little indent in the wall. This is where the ceiling is going to be. So uh, we don't need to worry about that for now. Um, and so this is where I want that main hallway, right? So we're going to use the dark oak slabs to uh, turn this this direction. And then I only want the spruce slabs to go like this. And then these ones aren't going to go here. Uh, we're going to get rid of those spruce slabs and the chiseled tough bricks. This is our main path block for inside the castle on the first floor. That is right. Things are going to change as we go upwards um, and different rooms will have different colors. I imagine depending on what I decide to do, uh, but you can see how we've got this now. So uh, this is a lovely little design that I think is going to really suit this castle because this chiseled tough brick, this whole tough block really reminds me of Zelda for some reason. Uh, it's got a very Zelda-like texture to it. Uh, and so I want to use that a lot in here because obviously Zelda is very uh, famous for having very nice castles and dungeons and stuff like that. And so that's the kind of vibe I want to give off for this one. That is kind of the main idea that we were going for. So hopefully you guys can see that now and where I was uh, intending to take this. So I'm just going to kind of work around with this design and get it the way I want to be. I have to sneeze really bad. Oh, man. All right. So now that you guys get the gist of uh, what I have been intending to do here, I can kind of just start building this and showing you uh, which direction things are going to go and where we're going to start placing stuff. So um, this is the rough idea, the main idea for just having this whole section here, but I would like to finish this roof. So let's go ahead. Let's work on the roof right now. All right, so small little update. This is where we are right now. I am actually absolutely loving this project. I realized just now how much fun this is going to be for me. This is something I've been wanting to do for such a long time. And now I'm finally getting to design the interior of this thing. So you can see how it's coming along. There's still a few things that I need to iron out. One of them for sure is how I'm going to design uh, this back wall here. I think I'm going to do something... Um, like a pattern or design in the wall. So uh, obviously I don't want this cobblestone and calcite exposed, but we have our first room. So I don't know what the room is going to be yet. Haven't decided, but uh, you can see where I've branched this off now. And so this is kind of what I'm planning is when there's a lot of little uh, open spaces like this, just having little rooms to kind of fill up uh, whatever that open space is and uh, we'll make it so 
um, all of this is accessible in a nice way. And I think what this room actually might be is access to this tower up here. So um, I forgot that there's actually even an exit over here. I totally forgot about that. Um, but you can see that's where we are in the castle right now. We're, that's where that room is. Um, and one goal for this room that I would absolutely love to have done is I want to get... I want to get I want to get the roof level uh, with this top of the window right here. Right. That's very, very important for me. So uh, we need to figure out a way to make that work. It shouldn't be too difficult or anything like that. So, um, yeah, it, it, there's a lot of weird little things that we might need to do. Like for right here, I don't think I can have one of these indents because of the size of this room right here. And it's going to cut off that window. So uh, we can't have anything like that. Unfortunately, we're just going to kind of have to like fill this in uh, with the tough bricks here. As you're seeing right now, I think that's the best way to do it, right? Because uh, we don't want any of that stuff. Um, clipping with the panels so unfortunately we will have stuff like that but maybe we could put like a painting there or something but it doesn't look too out of place right it still looks pretty normal so uh, we still have to fill in this up here but you can kind of see the direction this is going now um, and hopefully this clears things up a little bit more for you All right, so after that whole excavation, you can see uh, what we've ended up with now. It looks much more bare than it was, but trust me, from the outside, you can't really tell that anything has been taken down. So uh, the important part about all of this, right, is uh, now we can plan out the library. So uh, I'm a little short on blocks, so if we grab some here... All right, so I think I'm just going to have this extend this way here. So this path will go down like that. And so I kind of want the library to almost be open. Like you just kind of walk in and all the stuff is just right here. So um, by doing that, I'm going to line this like this. And then I think we're going to line it up with the middle of those three windows right there. So we'll have it turn like this. And so this whole thing is just going to be open and um, obviously we'll make a roof for it. But we want to kind of line it up with this right here. And that's where that main walkway for the library is going to be. So I think this would be really cool, especially uh, with what I have planned. I know that you guys can't see what I have planned, but uh, it's going to be cool. Trust me. So um All right, so I'm not sure what the last clip was, but I have done quite a bit in here. So you can kind of see the idea of what I'm going for. So I'll walk you through from the start as we walk in the door here. So obviously this is the entrance to the castle. This is the main thing that we see. And then as we head up the stairs, here is our introductory hallway, the entrance right here. I'm going to put a staircase in over here. It's going to be very narrow. I want this to kind of be like a, um, a back room staircase, if you will, just to get up to the top. Maybe we'll have some secret rooms off in this direction that you guys can discover. Um, and I want to put something up there. Not sure what yet, but uh, yeah, we just kind of have like this entrance hallway to start. And uh, we've got this room over here, which is like this little thing. Not sure what it's supposed to be. Uh, here is the access to this tower up here so we'll make a staircase going all the way up so that people can get up there and then let's see we've got the main room over here i'm gonna completely cover all this up this is all gonna get uh you know it's all gonna have a ceiling and whatnot um but we have this area over here not sure what this is gonna be yet i'm thinking some sort of dining hall or something like that it kind of has that shape to it um still have yet to do the roof and stuff like that uh but there's this uh, two sections we can go here. So we have this nice little back alleyway, which has access to a few of the towers over here. Um, so uh, I still have to finish that roof, but um, we have like this area, obviously, where we can put something. And then as we walk over here, this is probably my favorite room of pretty much everything that I've done so far. So this is the library. So uh, I went with this nice little floor pattern here. We have oak planks with the stripped oak logs and I kind of did like a checkerboard I feel like that looks really cool and then uh, you can see what I've been doing with the stairs here is I kind of 
have planned for this to be multiple levels. So I was thinking this one goes up towards this level and then it has kind of a ring around the outside of it for these two. And then this one right here is gonna go upwards and then we'll start a second floor around right here and have that carry around right there. We'll, we'll just do some unique designs and I want this to kind of carry all the way up so you can, uh, I'm gonna cover where these empty space is with, uh, I don't know, some sort of colored block but I want this super high roof to be visible from in here. So uh, the reason I didn't film a lot of this was because it's just placing a bunch of blocks. I've just been kind of covering up the um, white that is exposed by the walls. Uh, so I'm clean out of tough. So we're going to have to go back down into the mines and get started yet again. So uh, let's just empty ourselves of the items that we've got and let's go digging again. I do have to show you guys this while I'm here. If you notice something different, uh, we had a bit of a problem happen. So back in the day, I don't think lightning rods used to set roofs on fire. But uh, unfortunately, I was AFK and a thunderstorm came through and burned the roof of my house down. And... Uh, this is now my problem to deal with. Uh, luckily, though, I was planning on renovating this house anyways, so it's not that big of a deal. But I'm lucky I caught it because if you look over here, look at how close we were to having this go into this. This would have been an absolute disaster. This whole thing would have been burned down. So I luckily, so luckily, came up to the surface as soon as that had happened. And, uh, yeah, this is a bit of a mess we're going to have to clean up, but I think we'll do uh, a whole episode on its own fixing this thing. All right, after a long trip, I've got a full shulker's worth and some extras in my inventory here. This should be enough to get the job done. So what I'm going to do is honestly just continue filling in these walls until I pretty much run out of space. And then uh, we'll, I think, probably design the library, and I'll call that an episode for now uh because this is going to take a really really long time to finish this whole thing so obviously it's going to be split into different parts but i would like to do this right here very quickly so let's go ahead and work on that all right so we've got plenty and plenty of bookshelves here to work with so i made a bunch of looms and a bunch of chiseled bookshelves so what i wanted to do was actually design uh, a little thing for them so uh, i'm very short on the materials that i want so i'm only going to make a little bit but i want some spruce trap doors to line the outsides with uh, my plan is to build some sort of a ring that goes around here and then hang some fences from it. I think it's going to look really cool. So this is going to be the top of the actual uh, little staircase. And then I'm going to do a slab right here. And then we'll take our spruce planks. And I think uh, I'm actually going to go slabs for the inside of it. Because um, I think it's, it's not going to be that wide, I think. Um, and then so th I want the fence to be right there on that block so uh we're basically gonna line this upper layer with this dark oak line that we have going on here so all right so i decided to make the support like this here i think that's going to be a nice little addition and then what i want to do is kind of put some fence gates connecting through here i feel like that's going to look really cool so we'll make some of those all right so i don't have enough unfortunately but i was thinking Kind of just having them be in here like this and that will uh, connect in there. I feel like that's a cool design and it kind of like dips downward like that. And then maybe we could replicate uh, the same thing over on this side where we get these andesite walls. And then uh, we just take the iron bars and those will connect to the wall there. 
and then we can place uh, the andesite wall like that. So I feel like that's a cool little support system for uh, whatever platform that is. But I do want to build the actual shelves now. So so we can either go four like that, or that's two. That is definitely not four. Uh, we can either go four like that, or we can do the six, which is much, much bigger. Yeah, they definitely did a bit of an oversight when it comes to the haste too on the bookshelves because this is very slow. Yeah, I definitely, you know, I think I like it better this way because that's going to line up nice. And there's just, I, I want to have room to walk around in here. So uh, that's very, very important. What I was debating was, do I just kind of like flatten this out and add more shelves up here. I feel like I am going to do that. That would... So now we kind of have like a bottom layer and then a top layer. I feel like that's cool. Yeah, I think I'm happy with that. That's a nice little uh, nice little section for books there. Uh, but you're going to see what we're going to do in a second to make this look a lot better. So um, I just went in there and just added them so I could see the size. But now what I'm going to do I guess if we place it against the block, like if we do it like this, then it will, or well, we'd have to do it the other way. So uh, we'd have to do it like this here. There we go. That's, that works. So I think I'm just going to like kind of do a random pattern and just kind of break a bunch of them and we'll add variations in there by using the chiseled bookshelf and the loom. All right, so there we go. Now it's a little more varied up. And then uh, that's what we got these spruce trap doors for, was to line the sides of this. So, uh, <laughs> what am I doing? I'm jumping around there for no reason. I uh, <laughs> thought I was standing on scaffolding for some reason. Um, so now we could just line the bookshelves like that. And you can see it gets this really nice spruce texture by using the spruce trap doors on the side. And that's a lovely little border for the bookshelf. So I'm really, really happy with that. I feel like that looks really cool. So now we've got a nice little bookshelf there with looms, chiseled bookshelves, the regular bookshelves, and the spruce trap doors on the side. So now just got to do the same for this one and uh, should be looking pretty good. Okay, that should do for now. So I was literally... Just imagining that this is kind of all connected like so. So I was actually thinking we could replace these corner blocks with something different, maybe strip spruce or something like that. So I will do that in a second, but we can line up these fences like this and connect them to the wall. So then we can have another layer up here. And I feel like that's going to look really nice uh, having that second layer. It's going to be like a cool little area you can walk up to. So uh kind of like building it upwards if you will so we can just grab a few of these blocks so just putting these spruce logs like this and stripping them i think that's a nice little order for us to have on top of those fences so then we'll uh hop down you can see the kind of look that i was going for i really really like this so far that's very uh classy looking i think is what i'll go with all right, I don't know if I'm going to keep it, but I would like to try it, as I have these red carpets here, and I feel like if we just kind of line them in here like this, like it's kind of like an old carpet thing, I feel like that could be cool. I don't know. What do you guys think of the red carpet? Oh, I really like that, actually. I really like that. That That's super cool. Yeah, we're going to keep that. I think I'm going to do it for all of them, uh, but we'll do it on this one first. Uh, cause it, oh, all right. So what I mean is taking some spruce stairs here and putting them on the edges like this facing each other and then spruce slabs up top like this. And then we'll do the same thing like we did down below and line it with spruce trap doors. But then that gives it that kind of rounded look on the top, which I feel is pretty cool. So we'll repeat that for all these guys over here, but I'm purposely putting them at different heights to kind of add some variation to the room. Oh, look at that. That looks so cool. That's kind of the sight line that I'm going for. I absolutely love that. That just looks so... Oh, I don't even know what the word is for that. It just looks like prestigious. That's the only way I can think of describing that. But we got to get some more spruce wood. We are so low. So uh, I'm going to spend a little bit 
to uh, mine here and bring back some of that. But uh, I will catch up with you guys in a second. We can continue building our library. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to try and design this roof. I'm not exactly sure how I want to do this yet because this is a tricky thing to kind of figure out. Uh, so, man, uh, now that I'm looking at this, this is going to be much, much harder than I thought uh, because we can't destroy any of those pink blocks up there or the white, obviously. That is the exterior of the castle that is visible at all times from the outside, so we have to work within that. All right, there we go. That is the roof finished. Uh, I did kind of a little spruce wood slab pattern. I'll try and turn the brightness up for you guys so you can see a little bit better. What? But what I'm going to do now is add uh, a chandelier in, and I'm just going to use end rods and iron bars. I feel like that's going to look really nice in here, and I've got quite a few of them. So I'm going to make three or four of these. I feel like it should be uh, a really cool looking thing. So uh, let's get started on that, and that should light up a lot of that area much better. How does that look? Oh, that's a pretty good chandelier. I feel like I could add, like, a few more things. Oh, you know what? If we use glass panes, like gray glass panes, and kind of connect them in there, that would look really cool. Let's do that. All right, so here is what I was imagining. This gray stained panes, and the white stained panes are very nice. So um, I was going to kind of connect them at the corners, like we're doing right now. The, the white stained glass. And then we'll take the gray stained glass and we can kind of like put those at the bottom of the end rods. And you can see that's going to make this have a much. <laughs> I've done it again. <laughs> I've done it again. It's going to have a, a much more uh, prestigious look by doing that. So I think I'm going to do a uh, gray stained on the outside. There we go. That fixes it. I really, really like that. That just looks very complex very prestigious very expensive i am happy with that chandelier design uh, i would like to make a few little ones but i just don't know where i'm going to put them yet um one thing i wanted to do was make a oval bookshelf i just kind of had that idea right now if you can't tell i am having so much fun making this i like i feel like i could work on this for hours and hours and hours i've been at this for three or four hours already so um this could go on for a long episode, but I think I'm going to chop it up into pieces. Um, I want to make an oval bookshelf. I just don't exactly know where to put it. I think the librarian's little desk thing is going to be off in this direction. So I know that we'll probably do another one of those right here. And so I think over here could be a cool spot to put an oval bookshelf. How about that? So I think the, this is the way I'm going to do it is kind of, um, make it two sides. So, uh, something like this. Okay. That's a decent shape there. Um, I think what we can do is kind of just mirror that. And then, um, so what I was planning was that the books will go in the middle here and then, uh, we can have a border for it and it should look pretty good. I think it's just kind of a cool, little design to change things up so they're not all square all right how about that that's a pretty decent looking oval i would say once we put the books in there it's going to look much better so let's grab those all right and last one look at that i feel like that looks really really cool i'm happy with that that's that's very magical looking to me and that's what i'm going for in this room is i want it to feel magical i want it to not look like a realistic library but to look like a prestigious fantasy library and that bookshelf really kind of encapsulates that for me so i'm happy with that one all right and of course let's texture it so three two one and there you go i am happy with that that looks pretty freaking cool uh i do want to use uh some trap doors on the side here just to cover that up so let's fix that what if we did like a little alternating pattern this time around something Something different. Something like that I feel like is pretty cool. 
All right, so we're about nearing the end of this episode, but I wanted to do one last thing before we ended off, which was I want to make a stained glass mural right here. I want to make some sort of a dome thing that has all sorts of different colored stained glass. So that's what I've grabbed here. We've got plenty of it to make something cool. So I just want to get some blue ones before we head up there. Um, so... I, I, I don't know if it's going to look like anything, but I do want to have some stained glass stuff there. So uh, let's hop up and I'll show you guys how I'm going to do this. So first, what I'm going to do is create the background, which is just going to be regular tough. And so I'm going to kind of create a box with the tough. All right. So now we have our base. We're going to light it up in a second, but I would like to now kind of make a small little design. I am just going to temporarily light this up so I can see uh, but here is what I am imagining I am just gonna make kind of like a little Minecraft mini landscape here with the stained glass I feel like it's gonna look pretty cool so I don't know I like it I wanted some sort of stained glass thing there so I feel like that is uh, pretty cool looking nonetheless to have that up there like that so uh, it's kind of a mismatched mess but uh we can pretend that it's a landscape. If you look close enough, you can kind of see it. But I think that's going to do it for now. I still don't know if I'm going to release this video all together at once or if I'm going to save it. So I think uh, now that I'm thinking about it right now, I feel like I should probably release this episode now. So this is what we've done so far. It's been a lot of work. So... Uh, we've got plenty more to do around here, many more episodes of work going on in this place, but we got somewhere and I wanted to show you guys um, basically how far we've gotten. So let me know your thoughts uh, down below if there's anything I could add. Uh, of course, before we end the episode, we have to answer the comment of the day. All right, today's comment comes from Matt Boz 9674 and they ask... What motivates you to keep playing Minecraft consistently and on the same world, no less? I'm planning on making my new permanent world when the update comes out. Any tips for staying motivated in the early game before your block palette evolves? Of course, I've got plenty of advice for starting a new Minecraft world. So uh, this world was actually created when uh, PewDiePie had started playing Minecraft again, and that kind of... Uh, sparked a huge resurgence on YouTube and all of the internet for lack of a better term <laughs> to start playing Minecraft again and so that really kind of had inspired me to log back onto my world but I was very into playing it with my friends already on Minecraft realms and such uh, we kind of played every summer when everyone was out of school and so I started my own world because I wanted to make some builds um that I was making on the realms and as we all know uh the uh, Minecraft realms usually last around two weeks with your friends so uh, I knew that was going to happen and I had made some really cool builds on there but unfortunately I knew I wasn't going to be able to visit them again once that server had um done its time and so I wanted to start a single player world to start making builds for myself that I could have forever and so that was the whole reason I had started this world was to build in my own world and make YouTube videos on it and not have to worry about the server ever going away. So uh, a very important thing to note though that was that that was not this channel. I think if I ever reach this milestone of 100,000 subscribers, I will go back and watch the original videos with you guys so you can see it because they're really funny. I definitely was not as good at making videos back then as I am now. So um, it, it would be hilarious to go back and watch, but, um, I 100% would say, uh, starting off, you really don't need that much to get started in Minecraft. My friends always make fun of me for making huge builds with stone and iron tools when we play on realms. So it's all about just having that creative eye. Um, again, I love to look at images and paintings for, um, inspiration. And so that could be a great tip for you when starting your world is um, obviously they don't have to be anything massive, but um, there's like, we can actually go over to my house right here. You can see these are great starter blocks to work from that don't take any 
requirement of massive farming or anything like that. And that is we have polished uh, diorite, cobblestone, regular diorite, wool, and oak wood, and the granite. So this is all natural stuff you can find in any biome that takes less than 10 minutes to find, and you can make something that looks really cool out of it. So it's all about just using your imagination, finding the different colors, what colors work together. Um, the whole reason I built this house in the way that I did was the materials were easy to gather, right? And so that's one thing I can say that motivates me to keep playing to answer your other part of the question was use the blocks that they give you in the game. Go on adventures, search for things, walk around. If you want to use a certain type of block or something like that, search around for that block that keeps you engaged in the game. It allows you to keep playing the, the game and exploring and finding biomes. If you just take shortcuts all the time and you don't want to use any of the blocks that are hard to get, what's the point of playing the game, right? You're just going to tire yourself out because you just use the same five or six blocks over and over again. A great example is like this right here. I wanted to use bricks. I wanted to use terracotta. And so I had to, you know, fly around and dig up the clay and go to the base of biome and all that to get all those blocks. So that keeps me engaged in the game. Um, as well as I just want to create the paintings that I envision. So um, those are really important to me. And I think that's what uh, will help motivate you to play on a world. And the, the, those are some good tips there to follow those directions. And you'll actually be surprised at how fun the game becomes when you're less focused on playing the game and more focused on building creatively uh, with the survival aspect attached to it. At least that's the way that I look at the game. Anyways, that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much to all the new subscribers. Uh, we don't have any new donators today, so uh, nothing that we need to go over. But I will catch you guys in the next episode. I hope you guys are enjoying how the castle is turning out. I'll see you guys in the next one. That's about it.